What an amazing delight both Dina Shitula and Alfie Njenge were. I'm sure you enjoyed them as much as I did. That, of course, episode two, season three of The Digital Dish. Greetings and welcome to episode three of season three. My name is Denver Kisting. As far as this episode is concerned, we're moving from soccer to rugby. Namibia is prepping for World Cup 2023. And as far as that's concerned, a lot is in store for you for the next couple of days, weeks and months. With very special guests, we'll be touching base on rugby affairs. Stay tuned. We've got big names to boast about. He needs to know more now. Captain Strand and the team put out all types of fires. Good luck. Off you go. Chef Gordon Ramsay is on the hunt for the next food entrepreneur. Is this going to look better than what you had before? And Dr. Pimple Papa tackles bizarre skin conditions. It's your moment to stay connected to DSTV. Welcome back. You're still tuned into episode three, season three of The Digital Dish. On the menu for this episode, All Matters Rugby. We are in the locker room of the national team. A first time for me, what a great honor. Time now to introduce our esteemed guests for this episode. Mr. Paul Westlesen, seasoned businessman, as well as avid rugby fan, and Chris Angerbueta, rugby sensation. Greetings, gentlemen, and welcome to The Digital Dish. Thanks, Dina. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Can't be better. He's keeping cards close to his chest. I'm taking that for granted. But before we reveal anything, we'll take a brief break. Celebrating the kings of the castle this Father's Month. Heat belongs to the Duncan. LC is large and in charge in season three of the family business. Come and get it! Two slackers must protect priceless artifacts from dangerous thieves in Dragonlord. Oh, that's magnificent! And Europe's top players go head to head for national honors in the UEFA Nations League. It's a Father's Month feast on Go TV. Love it. Welcome back, season three, episode three is on the move. We're outside again. Time to engage these very knowledgeable gentlemen. Paul, I'd like to hear from you. Did you ever play rugby? And yes, we would include primary school level. <laughs> and we'd also like to hear from you. When did it start for you? When did you fall in love with the game? Yeah, Denver, I can't really recall. It's uh, in my blood and since I can remember, I think it comes from my dad, who unfortunately didn't like the Western province. So I was always this avid Blue Bull supporter with a bit of bad, lo uh, bad love against them, but I, I, I always was a big supporter. And then yeah, at school, I was really not, not the biggest guy, so I tried to play flank. I claimed to be a very uh, good six flank, always on the ball and so on, but I was too light and, late, too light. and later at school, more to, to the back line, because under made it big time. Under those circumstances prevailing at home, was there always peace? Yeah, of course, we all rooted for the same two teams, Northern Transvaal and uh, the old Southwest Africa. Because I'm, I'm delighted to have you part of this episode. For those viewers not yet familiar with you, I'm struggling to believe they exist, but should they exist, tell us a bit more about yourself. Where did it start for you? That's easy, Denver. It all started back in the gravel roads of Narva. My father was uh, my coach and uh, there was no pressure on me at under, se under seven level. So it was easy for me. It was, uh, it was a walk in the park. Were you the only boy? No, that's, that's, false, that's false information. I have a younger brother. Okay. So was it easy on him as well? I would say, I would say so, but yeah, obviously with the added pressure of uh, a brother playing for, for a senior level, uh, it became a bit tough later on. But, but yeah, we enjoyed life. Give us some career highlights while you're at it. Well, University of Joburg, Lions, Exeter Chiefs in England, Kings in, in South Africa. So I basically played in every competition. And then obviously more than 50 tests for my country. And what are you up to these days? Uh, just sharing all the knowledge. I mean, I've been lucky enough to travel the world and um, I, I'm, I came back and obviously started coaching. So, uh, yeah, just sharing the knowledge with, with the youth. I know it might be difficult to single it out, but talk to us about some of your career highlights. Oh, I was lucky enough, then, and obviously with a bit of hard work, played for the University of Joburg, got con signed by the Lions, then went overseas to Exeter Chiefs in England, came back, played for the Kings, and then, yeah, after all the years of... Of, of, of effort and labor, I played more than 50 tests for the country and scored the most tries for Namibia. So. so I don't know whether you're also keeping your cards as close to your chest as Paul is doing, but what are you up to these days? I'm, I'm basically in coaching now, Denver, so I'm just sharing all the knowledge. Uh, I've finished my, all my levels, so um, yeah, I'm sharing the knowledge and just uh, putting in the hard work every day, trying to better our youth. We're clearly bumbying with the big boys in this episode. Paul, I would like to hear from you. You have a very big announcement to make. How did all of that come about? 
Dat is het all about. This. Yes. <laughs> yeah, very spontaneously, I got involved. I'm not sure because on the last year, I, I, I don't know. I'm not sure what I do. What's my mandate? But I got involved by giving this whole stadium a, a nice makeover, and part of this to generate some interest again, energy and money, and uh, with my good contacts at the Blue Bull Rugby Union, and I asked the president of the Blue Bull Rugby Union to please send us a. a and I asked the president of the Blue Bull Rugby Union, Mr. Willem Strauss, just to send a team to Namibia because they all need uh, uh, match experience and uh, they were prepared to send it. So this jersey is for the, well, we're just playing on, on Saturday and the Bulls will be also here and we call it the Office Economics Goodwill Challenge. Wow. Now you are an avid supporter of rugby in general, but the Blue Bulls in particular, as you shared with us earlier. So when they're here on Saturday, who will you be supporting? No, Dendro, that's actually very easy. The Bulls being a franchise and the Wawichas or Namibia being family. So on Saturday will be obviously the home team, Namibia. It is makkelijk when bloed is definitely dicker as water. Precies, you will understand that. Yeah, because then it is for you also makkelijk. Is bloed not wendig dicker as water? What's your story? Who will you be supporting on Saturday? Are you kidding me, Denver? Obviously Namibia. I'm Namibian by blood. But you're also allowed to be who it is that you are and be authentic. I think that's important, Denver, so uh, you, you need to live out yourself and then obviously chase what you want in life. Knowledgeable gentlemen, as I said earlier, but we'll be right back. Mm, this is great. My new big screen TV, the soccer action, my friends are here. What could be, what the FA Cup? I need to get the soccer back on. <laughs> Not on my watch. A little bit of this and a little bit of that and <laughs> we're back in the game. <laughs> Clearing error codes is easier than ever with the My DSTV app. Simply download the app, log in, and clear the error code displayed on your screen just like that. Thank you, My DSTV. Welcome back. This is still episode three, season three of the Digital Dish. I'm learning so much, but I'm having also so much fun. Paul, I've got a question for you. Talk to us about your most memorable moment here at the Haki Kengup Stadium. Now, Denver, definitely not moment. There's a few moments. Uh, I'll have to start at 1988, Southwest Africa, Western Province at Newlands. We beat them 24-21, nobody will forget that. Mm, like then, a Cape Town. Yeah, of course, but we've beaten them on a wet, uh, star-studded Western Province team. And then obviously my friend here, 2010, Blue Bulls. From the five-yard line, he beat the infamous Dion Helberg <laughs> and scored under the post just there. And then back to Test Rugby, 1999, on this field, Namibia has beaten Ireland not once but twice, two Saturdays in a row. And I think Ireland was ranked about seventh in the world. So that's an unbelievable achievement of this fantastic country. You've made so many memories here. You've literally lived here, Paul. Yeah, You've yeah. literally lived here. What a fortunate, yeah. I wonder what you're going to come up with because you've also made significant memories here. But which was your most memorable one or perhaps your top three, Crisando? Oh, Denver, Paul mentioning 1988. I was born in that year. So you wouldn't have watched it because you were born that year, right? Nope. Okay. <laughs> but uh, most uh, favorable moment would probably be making my debut on the Hagi Gang Up Stadium in 2008, uh, running out to a full packed crowd supporting Namibia and obviously beating Zimbabwe in that Africa Cup final match. Five minutes. <sighs> I'm going to nail this presentation. <sighs> he was supposed to take them to the park. This is not happening. Think quick. Think quick. Perfect. This will keep them busy and upgrade. Upgrade your account with the My DSTV app. Simply download, log in, and choose the DSTV package you want. Just like that. Thank you, My DSTV. Welcome back. This is still episode three, season three of The Digital Dish. Gentlemen, you've got your work cut out for you. You're both very busy people, so we need to start wrapping up. Paul, what do you believe our boys need to do as we start prepping for Rugby World Cup 2023? Yeah, Denver, I think it's a great opportunity and incentive for the local guys who prove themselves during the season to test their powers against the Blue Bulls. And it all starts then. And then I think my friend here will elaborate on the qualifiers in France coming up. The friend here is actually a man with a heavy weight on his shoulders. What's your take on what we need to do to get ready for France 2023? First things first, Denver, fly over to Stellenbosch, prep well against Vierpia, Martis and Italy A, and then fly over to France and qualify for 2023 World Cup. Not in a hotel of doubt in this man's eyes. 
We've come to the end of episode three, season three of The Digital Dish, talking all matters rugby. I hope if you are in the vicinity of the capital, please make your way to the Aga Kingup Stadium. Else, tune in to DSTV 285, that's Network TV. Remember to also subscribe, share this episode and like it. Goodbye.